I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Today we're continuing with our connectivity options and our site-to-site -site VPN. So last time we created a virtual network gateway and we talked about our point-to-site VPN. And the reason why I bring this up again is our site-to-site -site VPN is gonna use a similar concept of a address pool that we talked about last time. And in order to do this, we need a new resource. And that resource is called the local network gateway. And as you can see here, it wants a IP address and it wants an address space. So this address space is the same one that we had talked about before. So this is our on-prem address range that we're going to connect to Azure. And we'll give this guy a name. Let's say VNet Local Gateway. And then we need this IP address. Now this is the public IP address that is your external IP or your NATed IP. And uh, this is where we're going to connect over the internet and establish our tunnel. So I'm going to leave this blank for right now because you don't need to know where I am. And we'll select our Azure Academy resource group in our location. And I will pause the video here and create this object. And we'll come back once that's done. Okay, our local network gateway is set up. Now we need to make a connection between our local network gateway and our virtual network gateway. And we can do that in actually a few ways. We could click on the local network gateway or our virtual network gateway, and each one of them has this connections object here. And in there you can click add. But what we can also do is go to the add and type in connections. So either way you get to the same place. Now the difference, um, which we'll see in a second for our site-to-site -site VPN, is that we'll be presented with these settings options. And depending on where you initiated the connection from, it would have one of these options already pre-filled out. So you see here, local network gateway and virtual network gateway. So what I'm gonna do is cancel this, and I'm gonna go back so you can see it the other way. So here's our VNet gateway again. We'll go to connections and hit add. You can see here it already filled in our virtual network gateway. And it would do the same thing for us for the local network gateway. And then we'll call this the AAVNet Gateway Connection. And then we need a shared key. Now, this shared key can be any combination of letters and numbers, no symbols. And uh, it can be anything from something as simple as ABC123 to some really long key. I think, uh, what is it? Uh, is there a limit that it tells us? I think it's like a 120 character limit. Um, so either way, you want to make this as secure as possible. So I'm not going to show you what my real shared key is. So we'll just hit OK for right now, and I'll be sure to change that later. So this is now going to take uh, a minute or two and create our connection. And this is only one half of the connection. Of course, we need to also establish the connection from our on-prem uh, VPN device, whatever that is. So what I want to do is take you back to our documentation for a second. And on this page, you can find out uh, about our uh, VPN devices that are supported. And we have a pretty long list of VPN vendors that we support, and then um, what uh, particular devices and what firmwares of those devices that we support. So what I'm going to do, because I'm using a uh, Windows routing remote access server in my lab here, is I'm going to click on the configuration sample, which is going to take us over to GitHub. And on GitHub, I'll click on this device, and it presents us with a PowerShell script. Now, I've already downloaded this script, and I've customized it a little bit. And uh, I entered in a couple lines here so I could run this 
uh, more as, as straight up code. So I will highlight these lines and run them. So the name of my connection is going to be the Azure Academy. And now it needs to know what my gateway's public IP address is. So if I go back to Azure, and I go back to my public IP address for my gateway, here it is. I'll copy that. And then what's that shared key? Well, that was that very simple ABC123. And of course, you can make this far more complex. And I'll type in the IP address range for Azure. Okay, and then I'll run these functions here, which are part of the original script. And then I'm not going to run this next section because I've already got a RS server set up, but you just run that and that'll configure RS for you. And then you can run this section, which will then create you your site-to-site -site, uh, VPN settings the way you need them. And we'll run this next section to establish our VPN. And there it is. And as you can see, it's a dial-on-demand. So that's the way RSVPNs work. And there's our public IP address. And under security, we would change our passphrase here from ABC123 to something more secure. And in our next section, we'll uh, set our VPN for maximum encryption. Okay, and then in our last section here, we'll set our connection to be persistent and redial if it fails. And then we'll restart our RAS server so that these settings will take effect. Okay. And then we'll run our connection to Azure. And we can get our connection status here. And it says that we are connected. And we can validate this under IP config. We see that we have a connection to Azure here under our PPP adapter for the Azure Academy. And if we look at our routing table, we can see that any connections that are going to go to our Azure uh, IP address range will go over our VPN tunnel. So that's how we know that we're going to be routing up to Azure. So that's great. So now we're connected. And what we'll do in our next video is we will uh, connect our systems that are in Azure down to our on-prem network, join our domain, and stand up a secondary domain controller in Azure.